Hi guys, I'm Kristen and this is Kristen is Fully Booked. Today I'm going to be doing a series update. So all of those series that I started in 2021, the ones that I finished, the ones that I still have ongoing, as well as all of the series that I'm giving up for good. There are a lot of series to talk about today, so I'm just going to jump right into it. I do have my laptop for a reference and I have broken down all of the different series into various categories. So I'm going to start with the category ongoing into 21 and still ongoing. So this means that I had picked up the first book in the series prior to 2021, like prior to last year, and the books or the series still is not yet completed. Okay, this section is actually not that bad. There are only eight series on this one. <laughs> The first of which is The Scalamounts by Naomi Novik. So this is A Deadly Education and The Last Graduate. And the third and final book in this trilogy, I believe, is coming out in September of this year. We just got a release for the cover. So this series I'm looking forward to wrapping up. I'll definitely be reading that last book this fall and then it will be a completed series for me. Then we have The Aurelian Cycle by Rosaria Munda. This is Fireborn and... Flamefall, and I believe the third and final book is coming out also this year, and that I think is called Fury Song. So another series that I am really looking forward to finishing. I'm definitely going to be reading that last book this year, and I can't wait to sort of wrap up and see how that series ends. This next series I think sort of technically counts, although if I categorize it as like part two, then it doesn't, but this is the Akatar series. So essentially I had finished all of the books that were out, so the first three and the Bridge Novella before 2021, but then obviously Court of Flame, Silver Flames came out last year. So if we're, if we're counting this as like a whole series that it is ongoing, if it's just sort of like part two, then I guess technically it was started in 2021, but I'm sure you don't really care about the specific details. <laughs> Either way, this is a series that is ongoing for me and that I guess I plan to continue. You can tell how excited I am to continue reading in that series. Another fantasy romance here, and that is the Blood and Ash series. I was pretty, pretty disappointed by the third book in that series that came out last year. But I will probably pick up the next book, so that's why this is uh, in the ongoing category and not in the DNF category. A series that I am excited to still have ongoing and to continue is the Locked Tomb series by Tamsin Muir. I think this book was actually originally slated to be a trilogy and the next book was going to be Electo the Ninth that was I think intended to come out this year and then I guess suddenly an additional book came to Tamsin Muir and she wrote Known of the Ninth which will now be the third book in the series. It is slated to come out this year but there isn't as yet a date I don't believe on that one. Another series that is ongoing and still ongoing, and that is The Burning by Evan Winter. This is the Rage of Dragons series. I don't think that we actually have a date yet for the third book, although we do have a title and it looks like there's an additional book in the series after that. Then we have The Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne by Brian Stavely. I actually did not read any books in this series last year and I have only one book left. And I know that there is a Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne read-along that is planned and going to be happening over on Alan's channel, The Library of Alexandria. So because it has been so long, I am thinking about reading the first two books again. I do remember a lot of it, but not like the nitty gritty details. So I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be picking up the first two books again or just joining in at the third book to wrap up that series. Then we have The Warrior Bards by Juliet Marillier, and this is actually a series that I had really hoped to be completed by this point. The last book in this trilogy came out last fall and it was on my December TBR. I have been reading it, I'm just still currently reading it. And then a series for which I have an actual physical book, and that is The Band by Nicholas Ames. I have Bloody Rose, the second book in the series, the first of which is, of course, Kings of the Wild. I have been following Nicholas Ames on Instagram since I think I started the series, or at least finished the second book. So I was sort of following along his journey of writing Outlaw Empire, the third and I think final book in this series. I'm really looking forward to it. And actually, now I'm realizing that I'm not certain if I know when it is scheduled to come out. So let me check and see. Okay, on Goodreads, there is still no cover and still no expected publication date. So, so I don't have super high hopes. I feel like this came out in 2020. 2018? That can't be right. And that is the last eighth book on my ongoing, still ongoing <laughs> category. Next up, we have ongoing from before. So a series that I had started before 2021, but that I completed in 2021. 
There's actually very few of them. There's only three. The first of which is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, the first era trilogy. Another series for which I have an actual physical copy is the Winter Night trilogy by Catherine Arden, the first book of which is The Bear and the Nightingale. This series really took off for me with the second book, Girl in the Tower. But if you read this book and sort of thought, eh, there's elements that I really like, but there was like not a ton of plot, or like I wish I connected a little bit more strongly with Vasya, give The Girl in the Tower a shot. It might change your mind on the series. The next and final one in this previously started before 2021 and completed last year is the Fable duology. She did write a companion short story that I have not actually read yet from this series and there is sort of a companion novel that takes place I think after this series as well, The Last Legacy. I have technically not read that either but I count it as sort of separate like this was the original duology and then there's just sort of like more offshoot companion pieces. So I hope to get to both of those, the short story and the companion novel at some point in the future. Okay, with those two sections complete, that is most of the series that I had still ongoing leading into last year. There will be some that'll show up in the DNF category though, I just won't specify when I started the first book. But now we're going to get into the series that I started in 2021, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> but to make myself feel a little bit better, I'm going to start with the series that I also completed last year. So now we're in the started and completed in 2021. And I'll start with Crown of Feathers trilogy here by Nikki Pau Preto, which is the young adult fantasy series I fell in love with last spring. I do talk about this series quite a bit though, so I won't say anything more, but adorable series. I also completely read the Remnant Chronicles trilogy last year as well. This is, starts off with The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is a really cute series. I did really enjoy it. I think if I had read this at a, or like first been introduced to the series at a younger age, this definitely would have become an all-time favorite series for me. But overall, I was really happy with the series. I also completed the Merciful Crow duology by Margaret Owen. I also really fell in love with this duology. I read both of them for the Olympics Readathon in June and thought they were so cute. I also really like Margaret Owen's like really kind of funky, fun with a dark bent sort of a writing style. There are two adult fantasy series, first of which is the Live Ship Trader series by Robin Hobb. And this one, you guys know, I absolutely fell in love with that series last year. And I cannot wait to continue on in the role of the Elderlings and hopefully see some of my favorite characters from the Live Ship Traders again. Another series that I completely binged in 2021 was the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. I was pretty satisfied with this series, but it definitely was not a favorite. I know that V.E. Schwab has announced that she is kind of coming back to that world and those characters in an expansion or continuation of the series. So I'm really curious to see what that will look like. And I'm definitely open to picking up those books again, even though the series was kind of just okay for me. Okay, and now we are getting into a pretty chunky section, and those are all of the series that I started in 2021 but have not yet finished. For various reasons, some of them I just haven't picked up the next book, but a lot of them it's because the next book isn't published yet. Okay, let's get into it. Started last year and still ongoing, first of which is A Course of Dragons by Jen Lyons. I am going to be finishing this book or this series actually quite soon. This is the Ruin of Kings series. The fifth and final book in this series is coming out later this year, I think in April if I'm remembering correctly. And if you're curious of jumping into this series, I have done like a should you read video before which you can check out. And there is actually a currently a series read along going on over on the channel Voyage Through Words with Sarah. Then we have A Raven Shadow by Anthony Ryan and this is the first of which of course is Blood Song. I have read the first two books in this series, but I will be finishing that series and wrapping that trilogy up well, hopefully pretty soon. Another series that I started last year and still have ongoing is Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. And I think that I'm still going to continue this series. We'll see when I get to The Great Hunt. I just hear really not great things about The Great Hunt from a few people. So it's kind of been hard to pick it up knowing that it is apparently really slow to get started. Then we have The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen. And this is actually, I thought, a duology that I thought originally was a complete duology. I have read the first two books in the series, but apparently there are another three planned to come out. I do think that our perspective is going to change in the first book we followed, Lara. But at the end of that book, the, definitely the world conflict has not completed yet. And you sort of get snippets of like, there's something else going on over here with these other two people. And I think that it's those other two people, her brother and his love interest, who are we are going to be following in the ongoing books. 
Another series that I started and have ongoing is The Rook and Rose by M.A. Carrick, the first book of which is The Mask of Mirrors. This is slated to just be a trilogy as far as I'm aware. I don't think that we have either a title or a publication date for the third and final book in this series. I'm hoping it comes out at least end of 2022, maybe early 2023, but I am absolutely obsessed and in love with this book, these characters, this series. I'm devastated that there is only one book remaining. I just want to be in this world with these characters. If you are new here, I do have a full review of this book, and I also talk more about it and the sequel, The Liar's Knot, in my top 10 favorites of the year video. <laughs> so, spoiler alert, I really liked them. Then we have The Counselor series by E.J. Beaton. I am not certain, but I think this is going to just be a duology. For some reason, I have like the feeling that I heard that or saw that somewhere, but I don't believe we have a date or title for the next book yet. The last adult fantasy series in this section that we're doing here is Bloodsworn by John Gwynne, the first book of which was Shadow of the Gods, which came out last year. I believe we're going to be getting The Hunger of the Gods this year as well. We just recently got a cover and it looks amazing. This is my first John Gwynne book and series and I am absolutely sucked into it. I will definitely be reading that book this year. And then I'm not really sure where to place this book or series genre-wise, but I started the Practical Magic series this past year by Alice Hoffman. I didn't actually read Practical Magic, that first book itself yet. I read one of the prequel series and that was Magic Lessons. So it was interesting. I did really like it and I'm definitely looking to continue on reading the rest of the series. I think the next book that I'm going to go to is Practical Magic. Still in the started last year and ongoing category, but switching to the young adult fantasy books, we have the Ray Bearer duology by Jordan Ifueco. I definitely still plan to read the next book, Redemptor. However, I have not been in the mood for young adult fantasy, so I'm sort of saving this book for when I'm in the mood to read young adult fantasy because I don't want to dislike it just because I'm not in the mood for it. Another young adult fantasy duology that I started last year, so basically just read the first book in, is the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. So I read Six of Crows last year. I thought it was so much fun. I actually really liked it almost against my will because of how popular and beloved it is. I almost wanted to dislike it for some reason. I do plan to get to the next book, The Crooked Kingdom, at some point. I would have picked it up immediately after finishing Six of Crows because I was really in the mood to like find out what happened next, but I was on a huge library hold for it, so I haven't yet picked it up, but I definitely will. Then we have the Six Crimson Cranes series by Elizabeth Lim. I am not actually sure if this is slated to be a duology or a trilogy, but either way I read Six Crimson Cranes last year, and this one I'm actually unsure if I'm going to continue, and that I think is the case for the remaining young adult series that I'm going to be mentioning that I still have ongoing and that started last year. These ones, I wasn't quite ready to put them in the solidly DNFing category, but I'm also not sure and I'm not necessarily going to be prioritizing this series. So Six Crimson Cranes, I thought it was okay, but it didn't match up with my expectations for the book and I'm just going to be a little bit more cutthroat, I think, this year in a sense of if I don't like something, I'm not going to continue reading it. Or if I only feel okay about something, I don't know. I'd rather try something and hope for a better than okay experience in the next book that I read. So I'm actively seeking out books that I want to really, really love and enjoy and being okay with not finishing a series if it just isn't something that I absolutely love. Also in this category is the Wildwood series, which I'm sure no one knows what I'm talking about, but this is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. So the series at large is called Wildwood. Again, I did enjoy this book. I did get sucked into it, but I was really expecting a Red Riding Hood retelling. And while the atmospheric aesthetic of this book is very much so, like not just the cover, but like within the book, the aesthetic, the imagery, all of that is very much so Red Riding Hood, but the plot beats themselves are Beauty and the Beast. I'm just not sure if I am going to enjoy where it's going in the next book. So this one again is sort of an unsure. I will decide on that one closer to whenever that next book comes out. I also have the Wildwood Dancing duology, so very similar titles, very different books, but Wildwood Dancing by Juliet Marillier. I read the first book in this duology in December, and I know what the next book is about. It follows sort of one of the main character's sisters 
in a very different place and I just honestly don't know if I care that much about hearing that com almost completely separate story from the first book. So I could possibly pick that up at some point in the future, I'm not going to count it out, but it is by no means a priority to pick up Sybil's Secret. Then we have The Aurora Cycle by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I did read the first two books last year, kind of one after the other. I got really sucked into the story. There's just there's just a few different reasons with the author problems and my feelings about some things that happened in the second book that just make me be like, eh, it's not a priority. I might I might get to it at some point, but pretty mixed feelings on that one. And then finally, the last one here is the Ash Princess trilogy by Laura Sebastian. This is another series that I think if I had have been able to immediately pick up the second book after finishing the first book, Ash Princess, I would have. Like I remember immediately going to my library app and trying to take out the second book and it had a huge hold. But like in that moment, I really wanted to pick up the next book. And since then, I just haven't cared as much. Okay, last category. We're almost there. These are all of the series that I'm DNFing. I Most of them I think I started last year, but some of them are probably carried forward from the previous years as well. I apologize if one of your favorite books or series is here. These are just my personal preferences. I might say somewhat cutthroat harsh things just to be quick <laughs> in order to get through this list. There are 11 books that I have to mention and we're just gonna get through them real quick. So for one reason or another, I'm not going to be continuing on in these series. In no particular genre breakdown, this is just going to be random. We have The Kingmaker Chronicles by Amanda Boucher, the first book of which is A Promise of Fire. This is a fantasy romance series. I actually was really into the plot. It's like a classic Greek gods mythology sort of incorporated, re not retelling, but like the gods are incorporated into this world a little bit. And I thought that was cool, but it does have sort of the abduction romance trope. And I really didn't like it. I did start the second book, but I put it down at some point. I kind of planned to continue reading it, but I think it's just probably not going to happen. We Hunt the Flame duology by Hafsa Faisal. I just didn't love it. I just didn't love it. It was okay. I think there was a certain level of like hype and expectation involved in this one. Anyway, I just, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. I'm sorry if that really hurts you and cuts you. If you really, really feel like I really should pick up the next one, I forget what it's called, but if like, if the next one is mind-blowingly better than the first book, let me know down below. I'm open, but at this point, I sort of don't plan to pick up the next book. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I just, I have read the first two books. I just think that with everything that I've heard, with sort of, the arc of the story so far, some specific terms I've heard the author use in interviews, I am pretty certain I know where we're going in the third book and I just don't want to experience that. So I think I'm just not going to. I think I'm just going to assume that I know what happens. I might even look it up actually, to be honest. Like I would be okay with just being told what happens because I know that it's in a certain direction and I just don't necessarily want to experience that happening. And I'm okay with that. The Radiant Emperor, I'm not sure. I think this is a duology. I'm actually not certain, but this is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. And you know what? I just didn't like this story enough or in any way connected to the characters enough to really make me want to pick up the next book. I'm disappointed by that because I thought this was going to be amazing. It just wasn't for me. I did do a full review of this book. So if you'd like to check that out, my sort of more in-depth thoughts about that book and why it didn't work for me, you can do so. The Legacy of Ori Shaw. I'm not certain if that's how you say this, but uh, this is a young adult fantasy series, the first of which is The Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I read this first book with my fantasy book club, with my local fantasy book club, and I think this is one of those examples of me having read a young adult fantasy book at a time when I really just was not in the mood for young adult fantasy. I think it was okay. I think it was fine. I think this book had some great messaging and I do talk about it more in one of my recent reads videos. So you're welcome to search that and find that if you want to hear more about my specific thoughts about it. But again, this is just like not a series that I think I'm all that interested in finding out what else happens in this world. 
Also Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan. I read this, well, sort of as a buddy read with my nephew. He read it way ahead of me and did not wait for me at all. But I read the first book in the Percy Jackson series. I thought it was really cute. I'm just not super into middle grade. My nephew has already read all, <laughs> all of the next ones on me already. So it's not like we're gonna read them together. He's read them all already. It's just, it's not a series that I'm prioritizing for my own personal enjoyment. Then we have the Wickery series by Dana Swift. This is the first book of which it was cast in Firelight. I really disliked this book. It did not work for me. I think it had a ton of problems. This is an example where I think that the romance or relationship arc was not nearly as good as it could have been. Like it went in a route that was okay, but I thought it would have been a lot more interesting, a lot better, at least for me, for my personal enjoyment, if it had have done something different with it. I liked the concept and I did not like the execution. To wrap things off with the DNFs here, I have a bunch of fantasy romance books, which I did really try a lot of fantasy romance books last year, and I just find them really, really hit and miss. I think it's hard with fantasy romance to satisfy my enjoyment from both a relationship as well as fantasy plot perspective. I think that that is a very difficult thing to do well in each category, and the following ones just didn't work for me. First of which we'll go with the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa. Actually, this one I quite enjoyed. I just got to the point where I didn't really need anything else from the series. So I read the first two books. I read the companion piece that was written from the guy's perspective, which I actually really liked. I did start the third and final book in the trilogy. I just didn't care at that point. Like the relationship was sort of tied up as much as I think it could be. It's possible that there's like a new problem created that they have to overcome at that in that book. I don't care to see it. I've gotten what I need out of that relationship and I don't care about the plot anymore. Then we have the Hades and Persephone series by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the A Touch of Darkness series. I think this one was just like smut focused, quantity over quality. I didn't really like the Persephone character like at all. And yeah, I was just like the plot was fine. The relationship was okay, but I don't care enough about the characters or the world problem to want to continue reading on that series. So I won't. Then we have The Wrath of the Dawn. Again, this was a big miss for me, actually. I think I had really high expectations of what this would look like. I don't remember specifically this was, I read this at some point in the summer, so I don't remember all of the specific problems that I had, but I just feel like that it didn't actually show to me that they had a connection. It just sort of told me at some point they suddenly did and I didn't really see it. And then the final series that I'm going to be DNFing is Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. I know a bunch of people whose opinions often have very similar and whose opinions I respect who really, really like this series. I just really, really didn't. I read the first two books. I think that's as far as I got. And the main character, uh, I just really don't like. She is very impulsive and then is not very sorry or regretful when things go wrong. Or she refused at least to retake responsibility for the re repercussions of her impulsive actions. It was more like, well, I had to act in that way. Like, it's not my fault. This is how that, this huge problem that was created by that, that it turned out this way. And yeah, it just didn't work for me. There actually was like a moment of realization that she was doing this towards the end of the book, but it wasn't enough <laughs> for me. <laughs> okay, that is it for my series update. Those are all of the series that I started, had ongoing, finished, completed, and DNFing, whatever it was. But essentially this leaves me with 23 series that I have currently ongoing coming into this current year, 2022. There are many series within those 23 that have their last final book coming out this year that I absolutely plan to get to or that their book is already out and I plan to get to it. So I think a lot of those 23 books will, or 23 series will be completed at some point this year and other ones are not as much of a priority for myself as some of the others. Let me know if you are a series binger or if you like to slowly pace your series out. I know a lot of people wait to even start series until they're completed and I totally get that. But also, how do you not pick up exciting books that are coming out right now? <laughs> anyway, that is it for me today. If you just want to let me know that you're still here, that you made it this far in the video, put a stack of books emoji in the comments. And don't forget to like or subscribe if you like what I do here. It really helps the channel out. I post videos on every Monday and Thursday.
Thursday. See you next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.